Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we've got a car lift. Amazing. So, today we're gonna to be running through, um, unpacking, assembling, installing, and initial trials of our Montford three ton double platform scissor lift um, and putting that into the garage so that we can work on all the vehicles in the fleet, the Jaguar XK8, um, the Jeep, the MP300, maybe the T4. Um, but as anybody who's been watching the channel for a little while will know, what we're actually doing is trying to build the most uh, efficient domestic garage um, we don't have unlimited space. I'm very lucky we've got a, a double garage of reasonable size. Um, what can you do in that space to make it super efficient? So look back to some of our other videos to see how the whole thing's working out. But today is all about this baby. So this particular episode of To The Garage has kind of been years in the making because I've been talking about getting one of these car lifts for years and um, it's taken a lot of time to a save up the money uh, b get my garage into a position where there's enough space to even warrant thinking about this and then c decide which type of lift i'd actually like to put in here if you'd like to see a little bit more on that decision process uh, we made a video recently on how to choose the right style of lift for your domestic garage. And I'll uh, put a card, I think, up there, um, which is a, a link back to that video. If you wanted to watch that first and see how we came to the conclusion, this is the perfect lift for the job. So um, now I'm going to switch to a little clip of how this thing was delivered, just to give you a sense of uh, what you might have to allow for if you're going to have one of these or similar. Uh, my lift came from Strongman Lifts. This is not a um, sponsored video. This is in no way endorsed by them. This is something I bought with my own money. I chose to use Strongman because it seemed like uh, the best supplier. So this is how it got delivered. All very exciting. Um, unfortunately, as always, I work away from home all the time. So uh, thanks very much to my wife and uh, mom and dad for <laughs> supervising its re-entry uh, into the garage and taking some video clips. Thanks all. 
Um, another thing I had to do, and the one thing I was able to do while I was away, was when you buy a lift, particularly in the UK, it might be different elsewhere, um, they may not be able to ship the hydraulic oil with it. Um, that's just an insurance and licensing type thing. So you need some ISO 32 hydraulic oil for the lift that I've got. You need between six and eight litres, depending on the model that you have. Uh, so I've got 10 litres. Um, that's not desperately cheap stuff. I think I paid £60 for this. This is decent quality. Um, you can definitely buy cheaper, um, but it's just something to remember and allow for. So, got my oil, got my boxes, and it's looking like it's pretty close to the time we should start unboxing this stuff. Unboxing the lifts uh, can be quite problematical in that it, you are dealing with something that weighs half a ton before it starts. If you don't have a forklift, then um, you've got to be um, reasonably well thought out in how you get this thing out of its packaging and onto the floor. So I've checked out the instructions, advice from Strongman, some video clips on YouTube of other people attempting it. And we're going to try and make it look as easy as it can look. But um, yeah, you can, you can feedback on how easy or not we made it. Right, so we got the, the lid off. And... There it is in all its glory. Pretty easy to take the lid off. Dad's now just working on the other tabs on the packing case. Um, you could bust the whole bit of wood off, but it's just easier to undo all the tabs and disassemble it. And um, we'll end up with a flat platform on a pallet. So with all the sides off the pallet, everything's easy to get at so the next mission is we'll uh, take all the loose items off the pallet get rid of some of the bubble wrap and we just need to establish whether or not this one's bolted to the pallet or not according to strongman some are some aren't it depends on the amount of space still left in the pallet so we'll look at all the bits we've got in the middle here uh, these are the lifting blocks Big heavy rubber bricks basically, and they've got lifting mats, which are much thinner, but the same material. These are the end ramps. Oh, you drive up, they're crikey, they're heavy. Uh, wheels, so that's one of the casters that you attach when you want to maneuver it on the floor, they just clip on. Okay, so what we're going to do is try and get it off its pallet. It's not bolted down in this instance. So that's just stripping off the metal edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a saw on it, cut out a section here so we can get a jack underneath the uh, synchronizing pole, both ends. Um, then we'll split the wood down the middle and hopefully be able to get the pallet out from underneath it. That's the plan.
Have a little look at that, Mum. Anybody's interested, the relatively unusual score saw, it's called a scorpion saw. Um, I don't think they were desperately popular, but as you can see on the right activities, they're really good. Basically, electric hand saw. That's it. Gun square? Gun square. Right, so we're gonna use in three trolley jacks. We're going to see if we can ease it up far enough to get the pallets out. Hey, where the camera, man? <laughs> oh, look at that! Another passenger. <laughs> So that's our technique for getting it out from the pallet. Obviously, we haven't got it off the jacks yet, which is a new adventure, but I think we can do that with levers. And that was relatively pain-free. Down. Round <laughs> right, so uh, me and my dad have managed to get it down onto the ground. Ably filmed it by my mother. Hello, mother. <laughs> she always does that. Um, <laughs> so she is down. No fault lifts involved. So next thing is a bit more packing case unpacking on the hydraulic system. It's worth being careful not to cut yourself with these tabs there. Yeah. Razor sharp. Yeah. Right. Yay! Oh, <laughs> Da da da. Da da da. Wheels down the bottom. Three metric tons labeled up electricals yeah. and the hydraulic cable, the C form 16 amp socket, which is the UK spec, I don't know where it is in other countries, and a handle to move it all around by. So, next step yeah. maneuver it into position, cut a few cables, Please. and uh, regroup. So that is the control. It's got the electrical connection, then armor, soft armor, admittedly, to the hydraulic and electrical connections. And we got a set of keys. <laughs> and uh, the one I was looking at online, you had to unscrew this panel. So this is a whole new degree of sophistication so in the top 
We have RCDs, transformer, electrical work, all done quite neatly. Like it. And you go down, you got hydraulic pump with electrical supply and trips, etc. Then you go down a bit further. And this is probably to adjust pressure. Uh, I know that something here just the, the um, speed at which the ramp goes up and down. So they're probably those. And then you've got a reservoir that is for putting your hydraulic oil in and a drain so that you can change it. Up top, you've got your power supply on. Uh, remove protective film, but that's uh, another light. Um, the up button, the lock button, 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 which will lower it onto its locks, and the down button, which will actually lift the ramp a little bit so that the locks come off and then go down. And that's your electrical isolation switch, big heavy thing. Uh, there we go which does have lock off points. Yeah. But as I'm going to be hooking up to this, which in turn hooks up to that, I'm lock off tastic. <laughs> um, all we've got to do before we try powering up is basically put the hydraulic oil in, which they strongly advise you to add through a gauze um, screened funnel. Um, Quite sure what sort of lumps and bumps they expect in hydraulic. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's a dipstick. I'm thinking, what that stick sticking off there for? So we've got a minimum max. So basically, if I fill it up to there and then start worrying about it, that will be fine. So hydraulic oil in next. So the only thing left to do is to hook up our 16 amp socket and plug and uh, just work out where the connector is, the lump is at the bottom. There we go. So that has given a supply to this, but we've got two isolators. There's the first one. There is the second one. <laughs> we have green lights. Nice. This is very exciting now. Very, very exciting. So, um, just checking behind me that we're not going to hurt ourselves. I'm going to press the up button. Hopefully, there'll be a noise. Yes, yeah, all good. So, here we go. Wish us luck, everybody. Feels like the lottery. <laughs> and we're away. Hey! And I'm going to stop after I hear one of the clunks for the safety device. And there is one of the clunks, and there's a second one. So I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to press the lock button, which should lower it onto its stops. Yeah. Uh, I guess I can let go now, because I know it's on its stops. Good. And I'm going to press the down button. Right, so um, before we put the end ramps on, I just thought we'd demonstrate the portability aspect of it. So there are two um, very substantial wheels, which my dad will just slide onto the one synchroniser shaft. 
basically hook over the tube and then slide on from the side. Very nice mechanism, very straightforward, very robust. Um, next thing to do is to press the down button on the panel. If you can grab that, Dad, go lower the um, key your finger on. So it goes up initially, then it drops. So it rises initially, then lowers. And as it does so, the wheels at the back rotate on the shaft and come into contact with the floor. When they get low enough, they start to lift the back edge of the ramp into the air. And the last little section, the rams actually start pulling rather than just coasting. And stop. And now you can let go of the button, Dad. And then the next bit, you have to hook on this little attachment at the front and you can lever it up. So I'll show you how that works. Very easy. You put the jockey wheel with very substantial wheels underneath that little cup. And then half a ton of lift, very easily comes into the air and it's actually relatively easy to move it has to be said good quality wheels obviously you'd uh, take your cabinet with you and <laughs> extend your cable but it means you can move it around in the garage or drag it out onto the driveway to lift something a bit taller totally brilliant So the next thing to fit are the on and off ramps. You see they've got casters on the end and underneath is a mechanism to keep them up. Basically nice and easy. There's just this hinged flap. When it's folded up, the hinge can uh, work and the, the ramp can drop. When it's folded down, this end and that end touch this casting here and here and prevent it from folding so very effective again good use of leverage and to install these what we have to do is remove one of these uh, clips take the pole out and slide it into position so we're going to have a crack at that now easy it off so that should slide out towards you I think what we'll do is put a bit of oil in them, take them all out. Okay. Right, if I hold the ramp, give the handles on the outside. Let's try to go on the outside of that. That's it. Yeah. And we're through. And that just dangles there. Let me try and get the clip back on. There you are, that's the uh, ramp down with the on and off ramps in position. We just did a quick check and the gap between the ramp surface and the rafters in my garage is one and a half meters at full extension. So just for future reference. 
Um, especially for my friend Gareth, who wants to know these things, what's the minimum maximum sill lengths on uh, vehicles that would use this? So you just go to the green, Dad, on that side. So minimum that you can get this down to is 145 mil sill length. Then you could say, bring this one up and it would support a sill 175-ish. Um, and then if you lift the other ramp dad, and to the end of there, there or thereabouts, um, you're at 210 sill length. So basically if you get a rubber block about 210 apart down to that first reading. The height is 10 to 11 mil, uh, 11 centimeters. Sorry, uh, so that's uh, four and a quarter for anybody in Imperial. And the gap that you can work in between the ramps, which I am particularly impressed with. comes out at 82 centimetres, which is 32 and a quarter inches. <laughs> 